Hello and welcome to the Morning Star series, Why Should I Invest With You? I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Ali Unwin, manager of the Neptune Global Technology Fund. Hi Ali. Good morning. So the thing with tech, the thing that everyone wants to know is, are these valuations sustainable? Why do tech stocks demand such high prices? Well, tech has had a fantastic run, um, up 25% year to date in sterling. So um, valuations are certainly a lot harder than they were. The reason that we believe that tech companies enjoy these high valuations is actually quite often because they are better businesses. And there are sort of statistical measures of that. Uh, for example, the operating margin of the, the median tech company is about twice that of the median S&P company. Um, but more importantly, and particularly in the bigger names, which is where we get a lot of pushback on valuation, the, the fangs, if you like, um, those companies have something quite specific about them, which in our mind means that they're worth more. And that's that they enjoy network effects. Now, network effects are something that people talk about a lot and you hear bandied around and it's a sort of a little bit of a throwaway line, but there's actually quite a rich and full academic literature on them. Um, what, it, what is a network effect and how they work? And essentially, if you think of in an industrial economy, you have supply side um, economies of scale. So the bigger you are, the cheaper you can make an incremental unit. Uh, the way it works in a, a digital economy or a, in a, a, what we call a zero marginal cost economy is that companies have demand side economies of scale. And all this really means is that every single person who joins the network or every developer who develops, develops an app on Apple's platform, for example, they make the platform or the network or the service more valuable for everyone. So your service gets more valuable the more people use it. Um, and it's actually quite interesting if you go back through the history of this, uh, AT&T were the first people to realize this. And they were looking at their phone network in sort of 1908 or 1909. And usually with an asset, you build it, then you depreciate it over time. And what AT&T realized is that the more people they got to use the asset, i.e. the harder they were sweating it, the more people were willing to pay for the asset, which has obviously completely different characteristics to a traditional uh, industrial, if you like, model of, of how the economy and the world works. So we think um, companies are able to benefit from these, and ultimately that gives them the ability to price over a long period of time. And you also run a US equity fund. Does that mean that when you're looking at rest of market versus tech stocks, you're valuing stocks in a completely different way? I wouldn't say we're still ultimately valuing on what are, what are the free cash flows that, that can be produced at, by this company. Um, so it's not a different methodology in that sense. But we are willing to, if you like, use a, a lower fade rate on the tech companies. And actually, there's, there's a lot of evidence to back this up. So um, of the top decile of companies in S&P, um, if you rank them all by their return on invested capital, tech companies obviously score very, very highly on that. But what's been interesting is since 2000, the, the top decile of companies' return on invested capital has actually increased quite dramatically. It's up near 100% now. Now, traditionally, obviously, if a company is getting 100% return on invested capital, they should attract a lot of competition. And this is where the sustainability of those network effects, as we see with a Facebook, um, with a Microsoft to some extent, with an Amazon, with a Google, that's where we see their ability to keep generating these super normal returns that in our mind are actually not necessarily super normal. Well, that implies then that you think that these prices can keep rising and that this actually, these stocks, despite being highly valued on certain metrics, could actually um, grow their share price even greater. Uh, it's, it's certainly very possible. And if you, the most extraordinary thing of all has been the, the law of large numbers, which was taken as a law and has since sort of demonstrated not to be, which was that as you get bigger, obviously you're growing off a larger base, it just becomes harder to grow. Um, but we've actually seen companies like Google, like Facebook, growing quicker now than they were three or four years ago. So the law of large numbers, for these companies at least, appears to work in reverse. Ali, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Wall for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.